Okay, we've finished up at Clappersgate Bridge now and uh, called in at Skelwith Bridge just to uh, pick up the cafe there. They do a rather nice cake and uh, coffee, always good to refresh you. Um, the idea now is uh, to head off to um, Holm Fell. Uh, we've not been there before, <clears throat> so this is going to be a first. We'll try and explore it, find out what the area's got to offer. Um, the infrared option I tried earlier looks to be quite good, so if the light's not too good at the moment up there, we'll uh, give infrared a go, see if that works. If not, hopefully the traditional photography will, and uh, hopefully it's a good good spot to uh, shoot some good new material. So uh, let's give it a go. I'm here now at Home Fell. Uh, this is the first time I've been to this area and to be honest I'm pretty impressed. Uh, there's a lot of very nice trees around here. Um, certainly a good time of year to visit so I'm going to try and get some shots now of the silver birch over here behind me and uh, let's see how that goes. Here we are then in Lightroom and uh, this is one of the images that I shot over at Home Fell. And what I'm going to do now is show you how I can uh, process this to try to create a good image. But first let's take a look at the image. Overall the shot that was captured in camera isn't too bad. It's lacking a little bit of colour and contrast but we can add that in very easily. The other thing though are some problems that I see. So in the top corners here, here, I can see some uh, vignetting starting to occur and this was because I had a polarizing filter on the front of the filter system when I shot this. I shot it with a wide lens but the filter system is actually quite bulky um, once you've got the polarizer on it. So you can actually see as well in the bottom corners we're also seeing a bit of the vignette. Another thing I don't like about this image is this big con con concrete block down here. Um, and that really does need to be removed. And also we've got a branch sticking in here that I'm going to remove. The rest of the image is not too bad. If I zoom in on the trees, you can see that those are quite sharp. So we, we're going to work with this now <coughs> and uh, see what we can create. So let's have a look down at the camera calibration. Now the standard calibration that comes with Lightroom and is supported by all RAW files is Adobe Standard. Now this image was captured on the Fuji X-T2 so I actually have a range of profiles that can be used with the X-T2. Now if you're not using a Fuji system camera you won't see these same profile options you will probably have different ones. So the ones that I'm going to pick are first off let's have a look at the Provia which is a good standard adjustment so there we are that's added in some additional color I did a little bit of contrast but I don't really want too much contrast in this image so let's take a look at what we can achieve with Astia. Now Astia is a little bit better it's opened up some of that contrast um, it's also adding in a little bit more color and let's just take a look at Velvia now this for my liking is usually a little bit too strong um, it it's not too bad in uh, actual fact, although the blue of the sky is now very strong. So I think I'm going to drop back and go to the Astia. Um, I really like that sort of look on this image. It's quite soft and gentle. Now, next thing I want to do is address these problems in the corners. So let's just zoom into that. And I'm going to use this healing brush here. Now you get two options with this. You can clone or heal. Now I'm going to actually try to clone to start with and I'm going to take a section of the image there and select it and we'll clone in another section of adjustment there. So that's not too bad. The other thing we could do is heal the image. So we'll move across to the other side and I'll just show you how the healing works. So here we are. Simply again, just click, drag, and then the brush will, you can actually position uh, the selection area over another point. So that's copying in an area of cloud there. 
and then the image is healed and that looks pretty convincing to be honest. You can adjust using these controls here the size of the brush as well as the feather and the feather being if you can see on here the brush is an inner circle which is quite pronounced and an outer circle which is a bit lighter. The bit between the two of them is the feather. The other option you've got is the opacity and this is around how the uh, adjustment gets applied. Is it applied at 100% opacity which is what you really use for the majority of these adjustments. So I'm happy with that. Let's have a look at the bottom corners see if we need to do anything there. Well we do but to be honest there's a lot of detail in there that if we try to clone in something or heal in something let's just try that and see what happens. So if we do the healing immediately you get something that copies in from a, a, an adjacent area and in this case that's actually quite good. So let's try it at the other side and here what we've got is although we've got um, a bit of vignetting we've got this concrete block so we probably need to take out the block itself and the result doesn't look very convincing. Now we can try to reposition the area to be sampled until we get quite a good blend and actually that blend there might just work. Here we go let's try that and actually that is pretty convincing. So we'll go with that and now we'll actually go and try and take this branch out here. So again I'm just going to do one brush stroke it's picked up from an area here and I just want to bring that in select the area so it adjusts care uh, reasonably well and actually that isn't too bad. So there we are those are the repairs now what I could have done is actually taken some of them such as the block here and actually done them in Photoshop but we'll keep to Lightroom actually because it, it seems to be working okay. We may change our mind once we come to do further adjustments. So at the moment the healing and cloning that I've done doesn't look too bad but when I start to adjust the image we might find that some of them are highlighted a little bit more and we need to do further work. So let's have a look at this and I'm just going to increase the warmth of the image because the, the light was quite nice on these trees and I'm going to actually reduce the exposure just slightly and as I'm doing that you can see that the histogram the central part is moving over to the left and it's taking some of the highlights with it but as we do this what's starting to happen is the shadow areas are starting to block up a little bit but the colors are saturating up very nicely so let's open up the shadows now and as we do that that's actually creating quite a nice look there we could try to reduce the highlights down a little bit but let's push the whites up a little bit as well and we can add in some clarity just to give these branches a little bit more definition and again I'm going to just open up the shadows a little bit more and that doesn't look too bad at all. Now the white um, the white point that I've been adjusting up here is now quite yellow the slate that's in the foreground is starting to take on a bit of a yellow tinge and I don't like that as much as the blue tinge that we had earlier. So what I'm going to do is make an, a selection here of the slate and I'm simply going to turn that a little bit more to the blue in terms of the colour temperature and I'm going to add in a little bit more contrast onto the slate because I think it looks nice with some deeper shadows and I might even add a little bit of clarity there as well. Okay now that's looking quite nice and um, next thing I can going to try is let's see what happens when you push the vibrancy up and that again is quite nice 
and we'll just scroll down and we'll see if adding a post crop vignette does anything for the image as well. Okay, so it does actually create quite a nice central draw for the eye into this image. I'm just going to widen the midpoint and the feathers slightly and we'll also allow some highlight adjustment. So now the highlight adjustment just to explain is where there are some highlights up here when I increase the slider it means that the highlights aren't darkened by the vignette but down here we'll see that the shadows are darkened a little bit more. Now that's looking quite nice. The area that I'm not too sure about is this bit here where we seem to have got a little bit of uh, colour contamination coming in where the healing took place. So what I'm going to try and do here is make an adjustment with the brush tool. So first off I want to make a selection. So I'm going to use the show select mask overlay just so that I can see what areas I'm painting over. And I'm using a relatively soft brush, it's quite a small brush, but I'm just trying to get the selection in there. Now, that's the selection made, and I'm actually going to desaturate that now, just to get rid of the blue, and I might increase the temperature slightly just to hide the effect. Actually, I'll add a little bit more saturation back in, just to blend it. And I'm going to reduce the exposure just a little bit, add some contrast, and that actually now looks a lot better. In the trees, what I'm going to do now is just check the sharpening, and that actually doesn't look too bad at all. We've got standard um, default settings on the sharpening and I'm going to zoom in to 2 to 1 so that I can see a little bit more clearly. And the sharpening's not too bad. I'm just going to reduce the colour noise reduction down because I don't need it and if I look here I can push the detail up a little bit further. I'm going to reduce the radius and I'll also bring up this threshold masking a little bit. Now I don't actually like what the masking's doing to the image here. It sort of, it gives a little bit of a false effect on, on this. So I'm going to take the masking off and I actually prefer that a lot more. So just looking through the image, that's not too bad at all. One to one resolution and that's actually really sharp. So there we are. That looks to be uh, quite improved. I'm still not quite entirely happy with the colour adjustment here. I'm trying not to do too much work to it because I want this image to appear quite natural. So let's try to reduce the colour temperature down a little bit and that's not too bad. One thing I could do is try to do an adjustment to the top half of the image as such. I just reset that exposure there because the exposure of the sky is really nice and I might try to add in a little bit more warmth to that part of the image and that's quite helpful because it tends to send the colour contrast against the foreground slates which are blue. So there we are, that's not too bad as an entire image, I'm just going to just going to reduce the overall image colour temperature a little bit more, there we go. And that's now looking as I want it to. So I'm quite happy with that. I can now save that and use that as my image.